What is up guys, Tech James here. In this video, we will be taking a look at the new Easy Flash Junior. This is a pretty cool cartridge that lets you connect your own SD card and play your Game Boy Color and original Game Boy ROMs. This thing works on the original Game Boy, it works on the Game Boy Color, it works on the Game Boy Advance and the Game Boy Advance SP. So big shout out to 16-bit games over on Etsy. He actually sent me this to review for a video. So I will leave his links in the description and we will take a look at his listing in a second. But let's go ahead and let's take a look at the box and then we can unbox this thing and we can get it set up. So it's a pretty premium looking box. I like the design. Very simple, but it looks very nice. Now the box is completely grey. There is only a little bit of text on it and it says, this product is not endorsed and approved by Nintendo. Um, yeah, I'm not surprised. Nintendo probably hate this thing. But let's go ahead and let's unbox it and let's see the cartridge that we get inside. So the cartridge just comes in a small plastic tray and that is it, literally just the cartridge in the box. Now the cartridge is very similar to the Game Boy Color cartridge. As you can see it has the notch at the top here and I can even show you guys how similar it is. Here is Pokemon Crystal and you guys can see it's literally using the same thing. But of course this will work on the original Game Boy as well. Now what it has different from the Game Boy Color cartridge is the notch in the corner here. Now the reason why this has a notch and the real Game Boy Color cartridge doesn't is because this this will not fit in the original Game Boy, however, this one will fit in the original Game Boy. Let me just demo for you right now, Pokemon Crystal, original Game Boy. If I go to put this in, it will actually fit, but when I go to power on the Game Boy, oh, the power button right here will not slide because the power button has this kind of notch mechanism right there. Now if we try it with the Easy Flash Junior, of course it plugs in and yes the Game Boy will turn on because it actually has these slots um, kind of like made for it. Now I don't know what happens if you try and run a Game Boy Color ROM on the original Game Boy. That might be a bit odd so we should probably try that out um, you know in a few minutes and see what happens. But first of all we should probably get this set up. So to set this up all we need is an SD card. I don't think the size matters too much. Obviously these ROMs are going to be quite small in size so I've just got a 16 gigabyte one. We also need some kind of adapter to connect it to your computer. So just a basic micro SD to USB should be completely fine and you're also going to need your own ROMs now it's entirely up to you where you get your ROMs from whenever I get my ROMs I make sure to back them up off my cartridges so if you guys have any cartridges laying around I do have videos over on my channel that can show you guys how to get your own ROMs but let's go and connect this to my computer and let's get this thing set up so massive shout out to 16-bit games for sending me the Easy Flash Junior for this video. The Easy Flash Junior is probably one of the best flash cards that you can get for your Game Boy and Game Boy Color. Here are a few screenshots. Make sure to go and check out his Etsy page. He does sell other stuff on here. He also has the Easy Flash Omega, which is one which works on Game Boy Advance as well. But obviously in this video, we're just going to be focusing on the Game Boy and the Game Boy Color. So yeah, make sure to check out this link. As I said, it's got very good reviews and it's very high quality and I would definitely recommend it if you're interested in Game Boys and Game Boy Colors and you want to play some ROMs off your SD card. So once your SD card is plugged into your computer, the first thing we want to do is format it to factory settings. That is because we want to install the Easy Flash Junior's firmware onto the SD card, and we also want to put our games on there as well. So if there are any other files on here, they could interfere. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get, grab our SD card, make sure it's connected. We want to right click it, and we want to scroll down to format. Now keep in mind, when you format something, it will erase all of the files on there and permanently delete them. So if there is something on your SD card that you wanna back up, up, make sure to drag and drop it somewhere on your computer but what we're going to do is we're going to choose fat32 we are going to choose the default allocation size and once that is done you can click on quick format and we're just going to click on start click on ok wait for it to format should only take a couple of seconds depending on how, how much stuff is on here and when it's finished it will say format complete so now we can click on ok and we can click on close now what we need to do is go to the official easy flash website so I will also link the official Easy Flash website in the description of this video. And if you guys go to the downloads tab right here, the first option is actually the Easy Flash Junior. 
So all we have to do is look for the latest version. At the time of recording this video, the latest version is the 1.03 kernel and the firmware on 3.0. I know the previous version isn't really too old, so this one must have been updated fairly recently. But all you want to do is just click on the download button right here. It's grayed out, but it is actually a button. So just click on this and it's gonna download the zip file in about two seconds. Now what we need to do is go to our downloads folder. We need to extract this onto our SD card and we can pretty much get it working. There is also just a notice here, for the best performance and stability, the items in the root folder no more than 32. So it's basically saying have like around 32 items on the root of your SD card, and that include the uh, kernel as well. And um, you can also put your ROMs into folders if you want to, but it says it recommends having 100 ROMs in each folder. Um, apparently that's just for the best performance, so I guess we can try it. So here we are in my downloads folder. I've got all my games. I've got a mixture of Game Boy Color, and I've got a mixture of Game Boy. So what I'm gonna do first is I need to create two brand new folders and I'm going to rename these folders. One of them I'm just going to call GB, this stands for Game Boy, and the second folder I'm going to rename to GBST, this stands for Game Boy Color. What we're going to do is we're going to single out the ROM. So obviously we've got Game Boy Color files, we need to select all the color files and put those in the Game Boy Color folder and the original Game Boy games will go into the Game Boy folder. So that's our ROM folders sorted out fairly quickly, we just need to drag and drop that on the root of our SD card. Now it's entirely up to you where you decide to get your ROMs from. I backed mine up of my original cartridges and I believe I do have videos on how to do that somewhere on my channel. Maybe you can search it. Um, but next we need to get the kernel. Now the kernel is inside of the zip file. So we're just going to double click on it. Now we don't exactly need to drag across every um, file in here. All we really need is the readme file um, just in case you want to read it in the future. There is also Chinese readme files and change logs as well. But we're going to grab update and we're going to grab the easy gameboy.dat and then we're simply going to grab these and we're just going to drag and drop them also on the root of our SD card. Now these files are very small and they should copy across in about one second. Now if you click on your SD card you're going to see this kind of file setup. You guys should have a kind of similar setup to me. Let me just view it in large icons. There you go, you can see it. They're easy to understand. So what we're going to do now is plug our SD card back into our cartridge and let's get this thing working. Alright guys, so back from my computer, what we're going to do is we're going to disconnect the SD card from the adapter and we are going to plug it into the Easy Flash Junior. Now I'm going to use my Game Boy Advance SP, the reason why I'm going to use it is because it has a backlit screen um, so it just looks a bit better than the Game Boy Color, but I will show you it on the Game Boy Color as well if you're interested. Let's just plug in the SD card, the SD card just plugs in there at the side and it just slots in nicely and it's actually got an eject tray, some of these are kind of basic and they don't. This one, pretty well made. I like the quality of this one. Um, feels very premium. So let's go and put it into my Game Boy Advance SP and let's go and boot it up. And it should actually start installing the firmware as soon as we turn it on. So easy flash loading. Now I think we have to wait a few seconds and it should actually boot us into the kind of operating system. So what we're going to do from here, we're going to scroll down and we are going to find the update underscore firmware free dot Game Boy. Now if you guys are following this in the future, yours might be on firmware 4, firmware 5, but whatever it is, just press A. It's going to say loading and we're basically just going to wait for it. So this is currently on version 2 and we're going to update it to version 3. So there you go, that is perfect. Let's update it. It looks like it's doing some crazy flashing. Now apparently if this happens it's not glitched. You just have to kind of wait for it. So there you go, I just waited a few seconds and it says press A to update, update finish, power off. So it's, um, oh so yeah, now we can actually power it off. And now when we power it back on, it should actually be good to go and we should be able to play our games without any issues at all. So there you go, easy flash, loading up. Um, now on the latest firmware, if we go onto the SD card, um, so you can see we, I've kind of just extended it. If you guys don't know how to do that, you can just press left and right to extend your screen. But if we go onto the SD card, we can go into Game Boy, we can see our Game Boy ROMs. If we press B to go back, we can go into Game Boy Color and we can see our Game Boy Color ROMs. Let's just play a game. Um, Simpsons, um, something, Treehouse of Horror, I can't remember the name. Let's just press A and we can go and load it up. And of course it loads just like a normal Game Boy Color game would. I really like this card, it's actually very nice. I've had some in the past which feel a bit cheap, but this one definitely feels quite nice. So what we're going to do is we're going to play a game of The Simpsons. I've never actually played this before, but it does look pretty cool. Well, I'll try and play. My setup right now is quite awkward to play games of how I've got my camera and, of course, my Game Boy Advance. Let's try and boot into a game, and I can just 
you know, demo you guys a bit of gameplay. It's basically just like playing a regular game. Um, but what have we got here? We've got Bart in someone else's house. Do you know, I actually remember my friend playing this years ago. And, um, and the game was even old back then, so... Yeah, but it does look quite cool. I was supposed to, like, shoot vacuum cleaners and stuff. Obviously, I'm not doing it too well. Um, but, yeah, I think we can probably test out some other games as well. So let me just give you guys a bit of a better view of the um, um, card itself. So, again, we're just on the SD card. Let's launch up a Game Boy game this time. Let's try Mortal Kombat. Never actually played Mortal Kombat on the Game Boy, so this could be interesting. Round one, fight. Oh, I'm gonna absolutely get destroyed on time. I'm really gonna lose this. Just because I'm I'm playing really bad. Oh, maybe not. Maybe not. We're getting a few punches on this guy. There you go. Let me just turn up the sound for you guys. The sound works perfectly. Well, obviously, if your Game Boy's got working sound, that is. Nothing to do with the flash card. The flash card sound is completely fine. We actually won. Is that the first time I've won Mortal Kombat? We have also got a few extra tabs. If you press select, you can scroll through them. So the first one, SD, we've got set, where you can set the time. Oh, and auto save. If you guys want to turn on auto save, you can actually do that. You just scroll down, you press A, and it will kind of tick the box for you. And we've also got help, which just has a web address, so that's not too useful. Um, but on SD, um, we can try another Game Boy Color game. What should we try this time? Should we try um, Croc 2? Or GTA. Maybe we'll try Lego Racers actually. Game Boy Color Lego Racers. Once we test this, I will show you guys what happens um, on the other consoles as well. Just so you get a basic idea of how this thing works. So, Lego Racers for the Game Boy Color running on Game Boy Advance SP. Never played this before either, but it looks quite interesting. And, um... What map is this? Like some pirate map or something? I don't know. But yeah, in a second, what I will do is show you guys this running on the Game Boy Color. And I'm really interested. What happens if you play this on the original Game Boy and you load up a Game Boy Color game? That could be quite strange. So let's go and let's try that right now. So let's test it on my Pikachu Special Edition Game Boy. Original housing and everything. Let's power it on. And let's see what this is like. Now, the screen is very dark. So hopefully you guys can see that. And, oh. In the lighting, it's not actually as bad as I thought. So, um, maybe it's okay. To be honest, I, I can see it better through the camera than I can um, on the actual console. So let's just try and launch up a game. Um, GTA, why not launch up GTA? So that was a bit odd. It did actually hang for a few seconds, and but now it's in GTA and the volume is really high. So yeah, that was a bit weird. It did actually do nothing for a few seconds, um, but now it seems to be working fine. And I literally can't see the screen at all, so only you guys can see the screen. I can't see it. What we're going to do, we're going to try it on my original Game Boy as well, and we're going to try and launch up a Game Boy Color game on the original Game Boy. So here you go, Nintendo Game Boy, the original one. Let's go and plug in the Easy Flash Junior. Now let's go and power it on. Just adjust my camera so you guys can see. Let's power it on. And there you go, Nintendo, very slow screen. Um, I don't know if you guys can see that, but as you can see, it has loaded up the Easy Flash. Can I change the contrast a bit so you guys can see it? Or is it just the lighting is horrible? I think that's the best I can do, to be honest. It's really hard to see, but we're going to go on Game Boy Color. What happens if you play a Game Boy Color game on an original Game Boy? Let's launch up Shrek. It makes a horrible sound and gives you a blank screen. And then it reboots itself. So there you go. If you've never seen what happens when you play a Game Boy Color game on an easy... Wait, what? Oh, it's actually come up with a cool screen. Let me read this to you guys. Shrek Fairy Tale Freakdown is designed for the Game Boy Color only. Um, basically saying you can't use it on the original Game Boy. That is really cool. Does it give you a different screen for every game? I've honestly never seen this before. And... Maybe no one has actually tried because no one really wants to damage their Game Boy by chopping off that little pin on the power button, do you? So let's just try it again. Does it do a very similar thing or is it completely different? We're about to find out. And it says, um, The Simpsons, uh, Night of the Living Treehouse of Horror can only be played on the Game Boy Color. I'm sure some games even have like little Easter eggs and stuff. Very cool. 
But there you go guys, that is the Easy Flash Junior, pretty cool flash card, I really like it, really high quality, and um, obviously it works over Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance SP, and you don't get many flash cards that will actually do that. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to check out 16-Bit Games Etsy page, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one.